Good evening and welcome to our devotions on Wednesday the 8th of July. Going through Andrew Roberts' book, Holy Habits, one of the ten habits that he says as Christians he thinks we ought to really engage with is the habit of the Bible. Um, this is my current daily use Bible. It was presented to me um, when I was inducted at St Andrews um, and it was presented to me, I remember very fondly, by Jean Walker uh, and I remember that particularly as we gave thanks for her life yesterday. Um, but it is my daily use Bible, it is the one that I use all the time. Uh, now, I do have a huge collection, probably 40 or more that I've built up or been given over the years, uh, and they all have their different uses at different times, but that's the one that uh, I use and gets uh, well-worn, shall we say, um, at the moment. Bible, or looking at the Bible as a holy habit, is something key to us as Christians in the United Reformed Church. We are sometimes referred to as people of the book. In other words, the Bible is central to what we believe, and if we turn to our creed at the centre of our church, the nature, faith and order of the United Reformed Church, we read fairly early on in that creed, the highest authority for what we believe and do is God's word in the Bible, alive for his people today through the help of the Spirit. We respond to this word whose servants we are, with all God's people through the years. Now, if that's not a profound statement that reminds us of the centrality of the Bible to our daily living, then I don't know what is. In Acts chapter 2, uh, we read about the apostles and the beginnings of their mission, and we particularly read in verse 42 of chapter 2. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. As I said, the Bible is central to our teaching. It's central to our learning together as Christians. The Old and the New Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, and the letters and the Gospels of the New Testament are together uh, central to those teachings of the apostles and it's the apostles themselves who set the tone uh, for teaching in a way that was passed on to them by Jesus. Through the ages it has been passed down to us. In that little phrase we're told about being devoted to teaching, devoted to learning and to sharing. So it's about being committed, it's about the context in which we hear that teaching, whether it be in worship or in other forms. In terms of teaching, the very earliest forms we have are in Peter's Pentecost sermon uh, in the New Testament, followed by the many letters from himself and others which pass on that teaching. It's about study, whether that be in groups, a corporate activity, or in private study. It's about reflection. It's about preaching. There are so many ways we can pick up and learn from the Bible. And it's something for the whole Christian community, where everyone can contribute in some way, shape, or form to that way of learning together. Creativity is also central to our approach to the Bible. It's not some just some dusty old book, some dusty old tome uh, full of old-fashioned language. Uh, some people do prefer the old-fashioned language. Uh, some people prefer newer translations. That's not the point I'm trying to make, is there are lots of ways 
that we can engage with the text. It is essentially a living document, a living document, something to play with, something to grapple with. And there are more, many ways we can do that in newer forms such as godly play, remembered Bible, messy church, to old reflective methods such as Lectio Divina, through studying art, through film. There is a diversity of ways that we can engage with the Bible text, of ways to approach it, all of which can be fresh and alive. Andrew Roberts, in his book, tells of a time when he was on a work placement uh, in a place where I worked and not far from where I grew up. Uh, a little account which he calls Basildon Bound, and I want to share it with you. When I was a student at York, I got a summer job with Ford Motor Company at their research centre in Basildon. Moving from one, from the beauty of the historic northern city to the concrete jungle of the new town was a big culture shock. The shock was accentuated by my accommodation, a rented room on a needy estate. Whilst there, I discovered that my landlady, who drank bottles of whiskey at an alarming rate, had done time for violent robbery and assault. Another lodger was arrested for drug dealing, and a few doors away, someone was shot on their doorstep in a domestic dispute. In York, caught up in the excitement of the charismatic renewal, I was gobbling up the biblical teaching of people like David Watson and Graham Cray, full of stories of heroes of the faith and the Spirit's gifts and work. In exile in Basildon, very different parts of the Bible came alive. Stories of God's care, cries of lament, and especially the psalmist's imploring prayer, How long, how long, O Lord? These were precious gifts to a boy far from home. Psalm 40 so beautifully interpreted by you too in their song, 40, became a real source of strength. As a keen young Christian, I tried my best to pray for those around me and to share my faith. At the end of the summer, I bought my landlady a Bible, presented it to her as a gift. When I got back to York, a letter arrived from Basildon written in biro on a piece of paper torn from a spiral-bound notepad, saying thank you so much for the Bible, the first book the lady had ever been given. A gift had given her com comfort and hope. Now, setting aside that story, which looks rather harshly on a place near where I grew up and where I worked. What we find there is a reminder that the Bible speaks to us in different ways at different times. Above all, it is a gift to be cherished, a springboard into life, real life, not a dusty old book kind of life. This is an ancient book that has so much to share to us with us today. It is a gift to be cherished. A library, if you like, to be wandered through. I used to love going to the library on Saturday mornings when my dad used to take me and my sister. And we used to have great fun wandering around the bookshelves. Imagine it in that way. All those books collected together in the Bible. The Bible, the word Bible itself means library. And it's all there for us to wander through. Don't read it as a novel. It's not there to be read cover to cover. Nor is it a collection of sound bites of verses to be dangerously quoted out of context, as you might have seen sometimes uh, when politicians or others have used it very badly. It is a living text, a collection of insightful works that can be a companion for our living. It can become part of our life as much as we can become part of its story, part of the story of Jesus Christ. We're reminded of that in some of the closing verses of John's Gospel, 
at the end of chapter 20, at the end of chapter 21, we read, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which were not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the disciple who is testifying to these things and has written them, and we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that could be written. Well, we are those books. We are part of the living story that is the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it is a living document. Turn back to our nature of faith and order. The highest authority for what we believe and do is God's word in the Bible, alive for his people today, through the help of the Spirit. We respond to this word, whose servants we are, with all God's people through the years. Let us pray. Living Word, we give thanks for words spoken and read, which encourage, inspire, challenge, and help to build community. We remember our prayers, the different needs of your children who yearn to hear good news, of those who stop their ears to the cries of the world, those whose voices and stories are silenced. May we become your people of the book for today. And so for the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Amen.